So step five is to calculate the value of the test statistic. So recall that the test statistic z equals x bar minus mu h over the standard error of the mean, which is just 35 minus 30 over uh, s over root n, so 20 over 10, so over 2. And this equals 2.5. So our z, z, and we'll say subtest to know which z we're talking about, is 2.5. In other words, when we standardize that sample mean, x bar, based on the assumption that the population mean is mu h, we find that the z-score for the sample mean is 2.5. In other words, that z-score is pretty far out in the right tail of the normal curve. So here's the, the normal curve of the sampling distribution. Here's our mu of 30. This is a z-score of 0. And here's our z-test of 2.5. That corresponds to a, um, you know, an x-bar equals 35. When we standardize the x-bar, we get a z-test of 2.5. Is it within the zone of acceptance? Of course not. It's way out here in the right tail, past the critical value of 1.96. And therefore, uh, we must reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate. So in other words, we conclude that we reject the null hypothesis that the mean air quality level in the Wasatch Front is 30 micrograms per meter cubed. All statistical packages will provide you with a p-value uh, in their standard test output. The outputted p-value is the probability of obtaining a test statistic at least as large as the one that you've obtained, if in fact the null hypothesis were true. In other words, it's the actual probability that you're making a type 1 error. It's the probability that you're rejecting the null hypothesis even though the null hypothesis is true. In order to know how to use a p statistic or a p value, you can remember the rhyme, if p is low, the null must go. Specifically what this means is that if p is less than alpha, so the so alpha you know you are determining, the analyst is determining the significance level that they're interested in, say 5% or 1%. If p is less than that alpha, then we can reject the null hypothesis with confidence. Let's see what this looks like in a picture. Suppose you have a normal curve. And it's a one-tail test. So you have alpha in the tail over here. So this is your z-crit. z-crit. And suppose, just like in that last case, we went out and we found a z-test over here. z-test. The p-value is going to be the area to the right of the p-value. Uh, sorry, to the right of the, t of, the, of the test statistic. So in other words, imagine this is here a, uh, the z-score of 0. Or in other words, this is where the hypothesized mean is, mu h. So if mu h is true, and we go out and collect a sample, and find that the sample mean has a z-score over here of plus 2.5, say, there's still some small chance that, that the null hypothesis is true. And the chance that the null hypothesis is true is equal to the probability under the curve to the right of the test statistic. It's this probability over here. There's at least this much probability 
that you might obtain this test statistic or even a bigger one when in fact the null is true. Now recall that alpha, and I'll change colors here, alpha is the area to the right of the critical value. So alpha is all of this over here. So in this case we have p is less than alpha. The area to the right of the test statistic, that's p, is less than the area to the right of the critical value. That's alpha. And when this is the case, we use the rhyme. P is low, therefore the null must go. So we can safely reject. The probability of committing a type 1 error is smaller than the predefined threshold, the significance level, that we had.